All right, so this is a fairly simple question here about generating a trade signal when the low of the bar, you know, touches uh, right or breaks, you know, the lower band of the Bollinger. So probably should say the lower Bollinger band. All right, um, and then the rest of it is really um, Blackbird uh, related questions here, right? So placing placing that limit entry order 12 ticks. So we'll we'll adjust that part in tomorrow's Blackbird workshop. And there's also a stop loss as well. So so today we're just going to generate the buy signal when the lower Bollinger band is broken there. And, you know, and if if there's repeated breaks, then we're only going to generate, you know, one signal there. And let's see here Obviously, there we go. So we have a bunch of examples there, there, yeah, there, there. Yeah, so there's going to be lots of places where there's going to be buy signals, right? And if you notice, well, actually, no, it doesn't say on here. So this question is about only generating buy signals, all right? So all, so if, if uh, price breaks the upper band, those are going to be ignored. So no sell signals on the upper band. All right, yeah, so that will be ignored. Actually, it happens quite a bit, right? So all those breaks of the upper band will be ignored. So. Okay, so with that, let's get Bloodhound open. So as you can see, I already have Bloodhound on my chart. And the first thing we wanna do um, is go to the main tab and hit the save as. All right, so let's put in today's date. Okay. All right, so now that we have a file name established, all of our work will get saved um, to this file. So I think the easiest way to do this here, since, since we only want, you know, a signal, you know, on the, basically the on the first, you know, touch of the lower band, I think the easiest way to do this is with a crossover solver here. And so why a crossover? You know, what is crossing over here? Let's see, okay, let's look at, uh, let's look at this, right? So if you look at the low price, right? If you follow the low to the low, right? That low price actually crossed over the lower band, right? So if we draw lines from the low of one bar to the low of another bar, right, we can make it look like an indicator, right, and so we can see the low prices cross um, the lower Bollinger Band, right, and that's the key here is um, when the low of the bar, right, touches or crosses, you know, the lower band there, that's our, you know, that's our, uh, that's our, our buy signal, so, uh, and that's when we place that entry order, right. So, yeah, so that would be the easiest way to address this. And the reason why we want to use a crossover is because, you know, crossovers is only a one-time thing. So these other bars here, right, so these other bars, the low is below the lower band, but it's not crossing below the lower band, right? That crossover only happens once, right, at one point. So that's where we're going to use the crossover versus the comparison solver. So let's grab a crossover solver here. There we go. Connect that up. And so input A, that's gonna be the price of the bar. So for a long signal, we want to look at the low of the bar. And so for a short signal, that would be the opposite. Now, of course, we're not going to generate short signals, but we'll get back to that. We'll circle, we'll circle back around there. All right. So that's input A it would be the low and the high of the bar. Input B is going to be our Bollinger indicator there. All right. So let's change the indicator there. And so I'll just type in B O L and search for the Bollinger. There we go. I'm just gonna use the default Bollinger settings. And then, so for a long signal, um, we're using the lower band to generate long signals. And so the upper band would be used to generate short signals. 
like so. Okay. And there we have it, right? So, um, oops, actually it's um, backwards here. Hold on a moment. Um, let me just, yeah, it is backwards here. So, and the, so normally when something crosses down, right, that's usually indicative of a short, short signal, right? So that's why we're seeing short signals there. And actually, let me just double check my indicator settings. Um, yeah, okay, that's all correct, right? And then if something crosses up, that's usually indicative of a long signal there. Yeah, I'm just double checking here. Okay, so there is one setting that I haven't adjusted yet, which is when we get across down, we want to generate a long, right? So that's usually opposite, uh, or that's opposite of kind of like the standard practice there. So we need to adjust the outputs here. And so we're going to turn the cross in direction, set that off, and across against direction, set that to one there, all right? So now we can see, right, when the high prices cross, right, when the high prices cross above the upper band, we're now getting a short, even though it's a cross up, we're getting a short. And so now when the low prices cross down below the lower band, now we're getting that long signal there, all right? So there we have it. Yep, there we go. And we can see a few other bars, right, where that low price, you know, breaks below or crosses below the lower band. So, all right. So now let's get rid of those long signals, right, because that is really kind of what this question is about is how do I get longs only? Well, that is where the evaluate comes in comes into play, right? So every solver has this evaluate option here. And this basically allows you to, to show only long outputs or only short outputs. So we're going to set it to evaluate long. And there we have it. So now we only see, right, the long signals. All right, so let's look over here. Yeah, there you go, right? So we can see price, you know, is hitting that upper band a lot, but there's no short signals anymore. So, all right, so let's name this here. So this is the low crossing over the lower Bollinger band. All right, and it's really just that simple. Now, there wasn't really any kind of detail provided here. So, yeah, so sometimes, you know, we're gonna see, you know, several crossovers, things like that. So, but that, that'll be fine. That's not going to interfere with placing that by limit order um, there. All right, and so like I said, this was going to be pretty darn simple and straightforward. So we have another part of this Bollinger Band question here. Interesting. Um, so Steve is asking if we can use the Bloodhound Setup Bar Prices Indicator to identify when the market actually touches 12 ticks below the lower Bollinger Band. Yeah, so if if price actually hits 12 ticks below the lower Bollinger Band and then generate an entry signal. Let's see here. No, because um, the Bollinger does not measure. It's not a measuring stick. Um, so the reason why it's called setup bar prices is because it only plots the price price points, right? The various price points of a bar. Um, so let's pull this up here. Let's pull up this indicator. All right. So there is the setup bar prices indicator. And you can see here that, oops, there we go. So from the plots, all right? So in the plots section here of this indicator, all you have are bar prices. So it's not a measuring stick. Um, it's not going to measure 12 ticks down from some indicator or, you know, any other data point there. Um, so no, that's not possible. However, you could adjust 
you know, Bloodhound and Blackbird so that um, Bloodhound can signal when price goes 12 points below the lower band. Yeah, so we could actually generate a, a different Bloodhound system to do that. So, one, two, three. All right, so let me just start a new logic template here. And let's give this a name here. All right, so when the low is 12 ticks below uh, the lower Bollinger Band, essentially is what we're looking for. And so that would only require a comparison solver. All right, so there we go. So, um, you know, when I, when I build solvers, I always, you know, just probably out of habit, but, uh, but also mainly because, you know, this is what every solver in Bloodhound is designed to do, which is, you know, when you generate a long signal, it's designed to also create an equal and opposite short signal. Um, so just out of habit, you know, I always set solvers up, you know, to generate, you know, the opposite side of the condition. Um, you know, so basically the solver is always going to generate a long output and a short output. Um, all right, so let's set up this comparison solver to identify when either the low of the bar goes 12 ticks below the lower band or the high of the bar goes 12 ticks above the upper band. So we'll set input A to price. And so for a long signal, we're looking at the low of the bar, and if it's a short signal, we'll be looking at the high of the bar. And then the input B, that's going to be our Bollinger. Let's do a little search for Bollinger. There we go. And all right, so a long signal, you know, uses the lower band for long signals, and the upper band is for short signals. All right. Now we need to go into the, the output settings here. So this will open up uh, the new rules window. Let's see. Yeah, when the low is less than or equal to the Bollinger, and of course this is going to be the Bollinger lower band, minus 12 ticks. And we want ticks, not points. There we go. So let's set this to 12 ticks. You know, or we could have set it to three points, you know, um, whatever. However, you, you know, you want to mix and match that. Uh, so if we hit apply, there we go. So now we can see whenever these long wicks, you know, extend 12 ticks past the lower band. So that's the long side. And so the, the short side would be the opposite. So whenever the high is greater than or equal to the Bollinger, right, and that's going to be the upper band, plus 12 ticks. And you can read that up here. Remember, there's always a sentence being generated here. So you can read it out loud, right? So if, so you're going to get a short signal if the high is greater than or equal to the Bollinger Right, and that's the Bollinger um, upper band plus 12 ticks. Click OK. And, yep, so there we go. There's a bunch of long wicks there. There we go. There's a long high wick <clears throat> that generated that short signal right there. So this doesn't happen a lot. Of course, in order to get this to happen, while the bar is forming, now while the bar is forming, you do have to change Ninja Trader's calculate setting. So we have to go into the indicator list, you know, and this is for Bloodhound. So in Bloodhound, we have to change Ninja Trader's calculate setting, you know, instead of on bar, on bar close, we want to calculate 
you know, when the price is moving on but down or maybe on each tick. So change it to that. And there we go. And so now, um, if, if, you know, the high of the bar or the low of the bar, you know, ever goes 12 ticks outside the bands, it'll generate a signal. And so lastly, last thing here is since this is only um, a buy system here, let's change the evaluate to long only. There we go. So with that evaluate set to long only, there you go. I think that was the bar that generated that that short signal. Now it's gone. Let's, let's double check here. We'll set the evaluate back to both. All right. Yep. That was it. So there is that short signal and set the evaluate to long only. And now the shorts go away. So now it's only going to generate a buy signal um, in real time while the bar is forming. Right? And here's a little tip, guys. You can always tell Nin Bloodhound's calculate setting. Um, you know, and we added this years ago. Be, you know, because a lot of a lot of um, traders don't properly, in my opinion, don't properly go through and get all the proper training that they should with the NinjaTrader platform. And so this calculate setting trips people up a lot. And so to help us out. And to help you guys out, we actually, in the label, you can see right there, it says OPC, on price change. So that's what that OPC stands for, right, is on price change. So, like that. And so now if I go back in to the Bloodhound indicator settings here, and if I change the calculate back to on bar close, now you can see it says OBC on bar close, right? And so if your calculate is on each tick, it's going to be OET on each tick. So there you go. A little abbreviation to tell you what the calculate setting is, you know. So that way, if you forget to change that Ninja Trader setting, you can always read it real quick in the label there and make sure that you've got the right calculate setting going there. And so then in Blackbird, right? So if we put this, you know, if we put this Bloodhound system in Blackbird, Blackbird would have to be running with the calculate set to um, on price change or on each tick. So, and so then Blackbird would be getting these signals in real time from Bloodhound, and then Blackbird could submit a market instead of a trailing limit order. So the way I was going to set this up is I was going to set a rate. I was going to generate a trailing, you know, um, entry order, limit entry order. Just have that entry order just follow the Bollinger until it gets picked up. Yeah. But yeah, that could be done both, both ways there. All right. So that was Steve's follow-up question there. Thanks for providing all that detailed information. That that helps me give you, you know, the proper answer. Yeah, so Steve is asking, can the trigger of one logic template, can the signal of one logic template be, you know, be the trigger, you know, of another? Uh, not, probably not the way you're thinking of it. Not yet. That's something that we do plan to add to Bloodhound 2.0. You know, there's, there's more capabilities of Bloodhound 2.0 that still need be need to be uh, built out, um, you know, uh, and generated. So that's one of them. So for now, um, you just have to do it the old fashioned way, which is, you know, so I don't have much to work with, but let's just kind of use this, right? So once you get the first signal built, you know, basically you just have to copy it and then paste it into the other signal, the secondary signal, right? Just paste it in there. And that's basically, and that's how you would use it, you know, and hook, you know, you just take the, the first signal or the original signal and tie it into your secondary system. At some point, you know, uh, way down the road, um, don't, don't, don't hold your breath on this, um, 
but sometime way down the road, we'll introduce a set of new nodes. Um, so that way, a you can actually have yeah you can actually have so this logic here, um, you know, could be represented as a single node, which that node actually is coming from you know a logic template. Yeah, so we'll have nodes that represent logic templates. So that way, yeah, that way you can eliminate, you know, all of these um, duplicate nodes here, you know, and just have a, a single source like you would do if you were coding. You would generate a, um, you know, a method as a single source instead of copying that code everywhere around. So for now, yeah, you just got to do it. Just do the copy and paste. So you know, make sure you get your original signal working as perfect as you can before you copy it. But the beauty of Bloodhound is, you know, if you modify your original signal, you know, and you need to, you know, modify the secondary signal, you know, just delete everything and then copy and paste it again. So, yeah. Just keep in mind, though, that every time you copy and paste, you'll notice it created... <clears throat> secondary solvers here right so there's a, a a low crossover lower bollinger band number one a bar direction number one so you do got to keep in mind <clears throat> that it is creating duplicate solvers there and eventually you know that that can slow down the bloodhound indicator when it's having to calculate too much stuff here you know so if i select this and if I copy it again and then paste it in here again, right now I just duplicated the solvers again. So now there's three copies, right? There's three copies of the same solver. So, all right, so let me clean that up. Let me get rid of those extra copies.